Welcome back. I'm Adam Thompson, and this is the third part of our STE Mimics uh, presentation, talking about 12-lead electrocardiography. In the first part, we talked about left ventricular strain. We got into the discussion of T-wave discordance. We continued that uh, into the bundle branch blocks discussion in the second part of the STE Mimics discussion. So uh, let's move on to the next STE Mimic. Early repolarization. Benign early repolarization, or BER, may be present with an appearance of ST elevation. And let me tell you, this is the most difficult, the most difficult of all of the uh, different types of STE mimics. This is the most difficult to determine its presence versus uh, an anterior wall MI. And you're going to see. So one of the Indicators is a notched J point. Sometimes people will say it kind of looks like a fish hook appearance. Uh, the ST segment morphology is the easiest way to determine malignancy of the finding. Again, this is going to have a concave, concave ST segment as opposed to convex. And I'll try to draw what concave looks like. So that would be concave ST segment elevation. Okay, you draw a straight line from the J point to the top of the T wave. And if it's below that, if that ST segment's below that, it's concave. And then look for reciprocal changes. If you see reciprocal changes, it is not benign early repolarization. If you see reciprocal changes, it is not benign early repolarization. Uh, it is most likely an acute myocardi myocardial infarction. And that's how you should look at it. So here's an example. You don't have to interpret this yourself. I'll tell you right off the bat, since we're talking about early repol, that's what this is. Okay. So typically, um, you know, most people will tell you this is going to be your younger males that have benign early repolarization. But I've seen it in people, you know, in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s that still have early repolarization. Um, and again, there's nothing that I could tell you that will be 100% to, to say this is for sure early repol. So if you were interpreting this EKG, you might first become concerned about this ST elevation in the anterior leads. And I know we're skipping past the interpretation of the EKG. We, we skipped past the rate, the rhythm, the axis, all of that stuff. And I'm getting right down to the nitty-gritty. So we see the ST elevation in these precordial leads. Um, and it's all concaved, okay, which is usually not bad. And that's how you've got to look at it because it could be bad. And the way you identify that it's concave is you could draw that straight line from that J point to the top of the T wave, and sure enough, the SC segment is below that. So that kind of you know gives you one sigh of relief. Um, and then looking further, you see the pattern actually over here in the inferior leads, which doesn't really make sense that you would see it in the precordial leads and the inferior leads. You see that same kind of concave SC elevation, certainly not to the same degree in the inferior leads. Uh, and you do see it in lead one, okay? Um, and you might be able to identify a little bit of notching of that J point. Uh, and all that is, is er because it's early repolarization, well, what is repolarization on EKG? Repolarization is quite simply the T wave, right? So early repolarization means this T wave is getting closer to the QRS complex. And as it, it gets closer, it's, it's repolarizing early, um, you still have, you know, that membrane action potential, okay? You, the potassium starts leaving before, uh, f you know, phase uh, three is done, and so you don't have much of that uh, plateau phase, and you still maintain a positive polarity here, okay? Uh, and, and that's kind of, you know, a more complicated way to understand it, but what I'm trying to tell you is this T wave, is closer to the QRS complex. So when the QRS complex is done, it still it goes right into the T wave and doesn't have a chance to level out before repolarization occurs. And that's what early repolarization is. And it's it's a persistent pattern in the people that have it, and it's always going to present with a little bit of ST elevation. Um, and it's going to make it much more difficult to identify an acute myocardial infarction. So here we have an STE mimic of early repol. Again, I told you about ST segment morphology. I can't stress this enough that concave, usually not bad, but it could be bad. So it's usually not bad, but it could be bad. Convex, 
Just consider it always bad. You don't want this. That's going to be an MI every time. So when it comes to early repoll, I keep stressing how hard it is to differentiate between early repoll and acute anterior wall MI. But if you really wanted to, uh, you could use uh, Dr. Stephen Smith's uh, ECG blog. He has a uh, you know a formula on there where you put in different information from the EKG. I'll go back to it. You would put in uh, maybe the the amplitudes of the QRS complexes, the amount of ST elevation. Um, and by doing these things, you can, with decent certainty, be able to identify early repoll using his formula. One uh, rule that I didn't mention, it's not truly a rule, but it's something to note, is that if you have intact R-wave progression, it favors early repoll. So we should have a more positive R wave as we get over here to these left precordial leads, right? And that's what we have here. Um, with an anterior wall MI, it causes a, a delayed R wave progression or a clockwise rotation of that precordial axis. Uh, so that is one of the reasons he uses your QRS uh, complex amplitude as a determinant factor within his formula to to decide whether it's an early repolarization or an anterior wall MI. So. Go to Dr. Stephen Smith's ECG blog. Uh, you could simply just Google that and type in, you know, early repoll, and I'm sure it'll take you right to where the formula is. Uh, it's a very popular thing. So here is the formula. Uh, he does 1.196, so you're not going to memorize this thing. You're not going to be able to do it in your head. Well, you might be able to do it in your head if you're a super genius. I can't do it in my head. So 1.196 times the amount of ST elevation uh, which is at 60 milliseconds after the J point in V3 in millimeters. And you're going to add that to 0 0.059 uh, times the, the QTC, which is the corrected uh, uh, QT interval. And then you'll subtract 0 0.326 times the R wave amplitude in V4 in millimeters. Super complicated to try to do that in your head, but if you're you know working in a hospital... Um, or somewhere where you know you have this patient for a prolonged period of time, take that 12 EDKG, plug those numbers right into his formula. I think he has it in like an Excel spreadsheet, and it'll it'll give you really good certainty uh, whether you're dealing with somebody that has early repolarization or uh, if it's more likely that this, this patient's experiencing an acute anterior wall myoc myocardial infarction. So again, talking about uh, early repoll, here are some things. They're not rules. I don't want to call them rules, but they're uh, characteristics of early repolarization. Your notch J points uh, could be present. They often are. Concave ST elevation must be present. Okay, if, it, if it's convex, just consider it NMI for all intents and purposes. Uh, intact R wave progression, just like I was talking about before. So if it becomes a delayed R wave progression, that favors an anterior wall MI. Short QTC, okay, it is called early repoll for a reason, right? So the T wave must be close to the QRS complex. Um, so less than 400 uh, milliseconds is much more suggestive of early repolarization. And then no reciprocal changes. If you have reciprocal changes, it's an MI until proven otherwise. So here's another good example of an early repolarization. And again, I'm, I'm skipping past. We have a sinus rhythm with a good normal axis. Uh, doesn't look to have any aberrancy. Um, so now we're looking, we're past all of that stuff and we're looking for some ST changes. And I do see a little bit of what you might think is ST elevation in these left precordial leads over here and maybe over here in these inferior leads as well. What makes it look more pronounced is the PR segment might actually be a little depressed here. You're seeing this trending down of this baseline, uh, and then it goes into that PR segment, which is also downwards. That's actually indicative of something called spotics sign. Spotic sign. I think there's a K. Spotic sign, uh, and spotics is uh, it, it's uh, indicative of an acute pericarditis. And for all intents and purposes, acute pericarditis and earlier polarization have a very similar pattern. Uh, you have that global ST elevation with acute pericarditis, but it's all concave. You can even have the notch J points. Uh, but 
this is uh, a patient that did not, I, I know for a fact, did not have acute pericarditis. This was an earlier polarization uh, diagnosed patient. And the only reason that that was important about the spotic sign thing is because of that PR segment depression. So it gives you a little bit of a pseudo elevation if you try to compare that J point to the PR segment. But if you compare it over here to the TP segment, it's almost isoelectric in, in a lot of these leads. It's very, very close. Um, in addition to that, the T wave is super close to the QRS complex, and we have good, intact R wave progression. Okay, so again, you're going to want to, you know, pay close mind to the patient's presentation. Get serial 12 lead EKGs. Dr. Amal Matu always talks about. Uh, Corey Slovis, who says one EKG begets another, and I agree with that too. Use 12 leads, get one with every set of vital signs, okay? So trend your 12 leads. If it becomes dynamic and this elevation grows, that's a STEMI. Earlier polarization should not be dynamic like that, okay? Um, so that's a STEMI. If you start seeing reciprocal changes over here, uh, that's a STEMI, you know? So uh, keep that in mind. Get more than one 12 EDKG, uh, and, you know, use uh, that rule of every 12 lead uh, begets another. And also, a great thing about these EKGs is every EKG comes with a patient. So let's identify, the, you know, what our patient's uh, symptomatology is and, and see what their presentation is. If the patient is super diaphoretic, crushing chest pain with this EKG, I might, you know, want to transmit it and talk to uh, the ER physician and tell them what I'm looking at. So one thing that does make uh, an early repolarization much easier to determine is when you see these notch J points, like you see here in the inferior leads. Okay, that makes it much more of a, a sure determination of early repolarization. Of course, these are all the other rules that we have. I call them rules, but they're not hard fast. Uh, intact R wave progression. The T wave is close to the QRS complex. Um, you know, the, the QRS complex is almost going right into the ST, you know, T wave right there. Uh, but those uh, notch J points really do stand out when you see them, and that should help you in identifying these early repol 12 leads. Here's another one, and, and this one should kind of scare you a little bit. When you see a T-wave like this, I mean, it's almost symmetrical. It's tall. It's, you know, got a broad base. It almost looks hyperacute, uh, but you don't really have that continuing in any kind of pattern, and it really is in existence where the QRS complexes are biggest. So uh, it's something to keep an eye on. Again, you, you do your, your serial 12 EDKGs, do them with every set of vital signs, and then changes that present will truly clue you in on uh, whether a patient's experiencing a uh, STEMI or not. But this pattern is an early repull pattern. Uh, you have uh, ST elevation, and it's pretty diffuse, concave ST elevation, intact R wave progression. The T wave is very close to the QRS complex, and it also exists over here in these inferior leads. And you have a little bit of notching of the J point uh, in some of these leads, but uh, it's not as impressive as the last one. And with that, we've come to the end of the third video. Uh, you can go back and watch the second video uh, on uh, bundle branch blocks if you want, uh, or move on to the next video, uh, continuing on the STE Mimics uh, lecture.